Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi everyone, welcome to this session. Uh, in this session, uh, we will discuss uh, the evolution of Fed's strategy of monetary policy. So, in the previous session, uh, we had discussed that uh, there are mainly two uh, intermediate targets uh, that is the strategy of monetary policy of using intermediate targets. Uh, one is targeting monetary aggregates and the other one uh, is interest rate targeting. So, in this session, let us see the evolution of Fed strategy uh, over time by the Fed. So, in the years since 1970, the Federal Reserve's uh, emphasis has varied between controlling the interest rate and targeting monetary aggregates. That means, they have been interchangeably using uh, either of interest rate targeting or monetary aggregate targeting. So, twice during this time period, uh, the Federal Reserve dramatically shifted from one strategy to another. So, then in 2008, as you know, because of the 2007-8 financial crisis, a further shift was necessitated by the severity of the financial crisis. So, the Federal Reserve strategy as well as the reason for this shift, let us is a, uh, review this by looking at uh, several sub periods. So, from the period 1970 to 79, for this period, Federal Reserve strategy in the 1970s was one of interest rate targeting. So, as is the case today, the rate targeted was the Fed fund rate, that is the Fed fund rate, that is the interest rate Fed had targeted at that time. Uh, now, also they have been using the same in for the interest rate targeting, uh, they have been using Fed fund rate as the instrument for that. So, the strategy was not to peg the rate at any one value for a long period of time. You know that Fed fund rate uh, over period of time, they have been changing it. Uh, if you see that the FOMC meeting, that means 8 times in a year they meet uh, and every time either they retain or change most time they change the Fed fund rate. That means, the target rate was reconsidered at each FOMC meeting and adjusted as deemed necessary in light of the state of the economy. So, it does not mean that monetary aggregates were not neglected in the 1970s, uh, although a month to month basis interest rate targets was given precedence. In the 19 another period from 1979 to 82, there is a first dramatic switch in the Federal Reserve policy by targeting monetary aggregates. That means, dramatic switch of Federal Reserve policy came on October 6, 1979 when the Fed abandoned targeting the Fed fund rate. The main reason was due to the accelerating inflation rate uh, in the 1979. So, it here uh, by abandoning the Fed fund rate, uh, it uh, adopted a strategy of directly controlling bank reserves to increase its ability to hit target ranges for growth in monetary aggregates, especially uh, M1 and M2. So, in the 1970s, as I mentioned here, there was ever accelerating inflation was there. So, the recession that many had expected during the year had not materialized. So, there was a great deal of uncertainty about the strength of the private sector demand as well. Because all these reasons Fed followed and um, that means focus more on the monetary aggregates because of the expectation is that by directly targeting uh, on monetary aggregates, it can control uh, the inflation, the ever accelerating inflation. Then the further evolution, we can see that between 1982 and 2008, there was a gradual return to Fed fund rate targeting. And not only that, during this period, the Fed was following a kind of implicit targeting as well, uh, implicit anchoring, not really highlighting, though they have been using uh, Fed fund rate targeting that the interest rate targeting, but overall they also followed an implicit anchoring that not using a explicit nominal anger 
for example not highlighting ffr as the nominal anger so whenever is uh, new information comes and depending on the situation in the economy uh, they have been following uh, some nominal implicit anger uh, in order to achieve the, the final outcome however overall uh, we can say that they have been continuing with the uh, ffr targeting that is the interest rate targeting by abandoning the monetary aggregate targeting so the main reason for that the reason for abandoning the monetary aggregates uh, targeting was that the relationship between money income there was a breakdown due to the breakdown of the money income relationship that was observed in the 1980s uh, it force the fed to abandon the uh, money supply monetary aggregate targeting and then again uh, switch back to fed fund targeting so the especially the instability of money demand uh, that also what a phenomenon happened in the 1980s uh, and as a result uh, overall uh, there was a uh, breakdown of the money income relationship in the 1980s then during 1994-2012, though they have been following FFR targeting, there was a move toward a greater transparency. That means forward-looking monetary policy announcement, not giving any surprise, giving a clear-cut idea uh, what are the monetary policy going to happen in the coming days. The objective was to give uh, more transparency in the monetary policy. So, announcing the forecast on the FFR by FOMC members and also without name identification, or they also give uh, the future values of a uh, Fed fund rate. That means uh, giving more hint to the economic agents uh, about what is going to happen, what is, what is the monetary policy look like. Then in 2008-2012, we can see that there was a, uh, the confronting the zero bound problem. So, at the beginning uh, of 2007, 8, 9 financial crisis, the Federal Reserve was conducting policy under a Fed fund rate strategy. That means they have been following the Fed fund rate strategy that the interest rate targeting as the main strategy. So, by the summer of 2008, in an effort to reverse economic downturn, the central bank had reduced the Fed fund rate essentially to zero. That means uh, between 0 to 0 0.025. That means literally it means that the short term interest rate is very very low at the bottom literally banks won't pay other banks to take their uh, funds right so this is a zero bound problem so that means zero is the effective lower bound for the federal fund rate or any other nominal interest rate so this development led the Federal Reserve to adopt a number of unconventional monetary policy instruments. Though they have been using FFR, now also they are using FFR other the interest rate targeting. But especially during 2007-8-9 period, because the deposit and credit creation process endangered uh, by the open market or purchase has stalled, and because of this, Fed has adopted a large number of unconventional monetary policy instruments. Also, you know that uh, during that time, uh, the crisis time, the liquidity with the banking system and overall in the economy was at a very bottom level. There was a liquidity crisis, many financial institutions failed, uh, severe liquidity crisis. Um, so, Fed uh, followed several unconventional monetary policy instruments. So, these policy initiatives include large purchases of mortgage backed securities and commercial paper. So, as a part of the bailout package, uh, not only um, US government but also the Fed fund also uh, engaged in uh, large purchase of mortgage backed securities and commercial paper with the aim to inject uh, liquidity in the economy. So, other actions were launched to hedge funds and other investment firms uh, that were used to finance the purchase of securities backed by student loans, uh, car loans, credit card receivables and etc. So, taken together uh, these initiatives have been called uh, quantitative easing that means increasing the liquidity in the economy that means a huge increase in money supply in the economy is called um, uh, quantitative easing. So, the Fed was, Fed was seeking to provide credit to a number of sectors of the economy uh, that would otherwise slow down due to the shortage of funds from the banks. So, in order to prevent the recession, in order to prevent the uh, depression, economic depression, uh, Fed used this unconventional monetary policy strategy uh, in 2007-8 period. Moving further, one of the points I did not explain in the previous uh, class 
was the implicit anchoring in addition to monetary aggregate targeting and Fed fund uh, rate target that is interest rate targeting that is called uh, just do it monetary policy strategy. That means from 1980s up until the time uh, Ben Benange became when he, he became the chair of the Fed Reserve in 2006 the Fed Reserve was able to achieve excellent macroeconomic performance and it did so without using an explicit nominal anger such as inflation target or uh, interest rate targeting etc. So they have been using interest rate targeting but they did not use uh, very explicitly these tools and they have been following some implicit anchoring. Uh, although Fed Reserve did not articulate an explicit strategy, a coherent strategy for the conduct of monetary policy existed nonetheless. So, this strategy involved an implicit but not an explicit nominal anger in the form of overriding concern on the part of the Federal Reserve to control inflation in the long run. Uh, having discussed these tra strategies and tactics of monetary policy, let us now uh, look at the recent international experience. Uh, in conducting monetary policies. So, one of the strategy that is gaining momentum these days is the uh, inflation targeting, inflation targeting as a uh, monetary policy strategy. So, inflation targeting it also can be read along with the independence of the central banks to uh, it is suspected that giving an inflation targeting and giving uh, a uh, target that the, this is the rate of inflation that should be achieved uh, by the central bank using its tools uh, that the goal is an inflation targeting. Uh, this would uh, reduce the effect of political pressures on central banks. So, in general the move to inflation targeting uh, coincides with a grant of greater independence to central banks. So, the, because in the previous class just recall what when we discussed two key elements or uh, key dimensions of central bank independence. One is the choosing of uh, tools that is whether they can use um, conventional tools within that the open market operations, discount window, reserve requirement etc. Or choosing the tools and other one is uh, choosing the goals. So, mostly uh, the political pressure comes in the choosing of the goals. So, accordingly when they, they choose the goal they have to select the appropriate tool as well right. So, in order to reduce this pressure um, the inflation target has been uh, come up as a potential solution uh, giving the central bank independent control of its policy instruments and a clear mandate to target inflation greatly limits government's ability to manipulate uh, monetary policy for political purpose. So, another pragmatic motivation for the move to inflation targeting in several countries was that they experienced problems similar to those uh, those the United States experienced with the monetary aggregates as intermediate targets. So, monetary targets aggregates as the intermediate targets the issue here is actually the uh, time inconsistency problem because when they target uh, monetary money supply. So, how long it takes the money supply to make an impact on the economy that the impact on GDP. So, how long it takes? So, that means that there is a time inconsistency problem is there uh, money supply even increasing the money supply how long it takes uh, time to make an impact on rate of interest and then from there the impact on uh, GDP how long this would take. And because uh, over period of time so many other factors will come into play and as a result suppose increase in money supply is not necessary that it will because increase in money supply uh, we anticipate we expect that rate of interest will decline, cost of borrowing will decline and GDP will increase right the investment will increase. But how long this will take there is a time inconsistency problem because there are so many other factors also influence this pathway. So, because of this uh, monetary policy they have been directly started targeting uh, inflation as the one of the nominal variable. So, about inflation targeting it involves several elements. One is public announcement of medium term numerical objectives for inflation. For example, in India, India's inflation targeting is uh, 4 percentage uh, with a upper and lower bound tolerance level of 2 percentage. So, that means a public announcement of medium term numerical objective that is the target 
and second is an institutional commitment to price stability as the primary long run goal of monetary policy and a commitment to achieving the inflation goal. Thirdly, an information inclusive approach uh, in which many variables not just monetary aggregates are used in making decisions about monetary policy. And fourth one, increased uh, inflation targeting transparency of the monetary policy strategy through communication with the public and the markets about the plans and objectives of monetary policy makers. That means uh, it will increase the transparency so that the increase inflation targeting uh, transparency so that suppose they announce that this is the target and accordingly the public and the market can anticipate that the monetary policy will be coming in order to ensure that uh, the target is achieved. And finally, increase accountability of the central bank uh, for attaining its inflation objective. So that the central bank is now accountable, they are accountable to achieve this target. So that accordingly, the policy tools should be implemented, selected and implemented. And they are because since they are accountable, uh, they will be making them more accountable to attaining uh, its inflation objectives. There are several advantages of inflation targeting. The first one uh, is the reduction of the time inconsistency problem. So, the time inconsistency problem arises when a future policy plan uh, is no longer optimal at a later date uh, even when no new information has arrived in the meantime. So, a policy announcement uh, will be time inconsistent uh, if economic agents know that uh, the policy maker will want to renege uh, on the decision when it comes time to act. Uh, because an explicit numerical inflation target increases the accountability of the central bank, uh, inflation targeting can reduce the likelihood that central bank will fall into the time inconsistency trap of trying to expand output and employment. Uh, in the short run by pursuing an overly expansionary monetary policy. Uh, second advantage, uh, the proponents of inflation targeting, uh, targeting argue that this would increase transparency. That means, inflation targeting has the advantage that it is readily understood by the public and is thus highly transparent. And the third point in favor of inflation targeting is that uh, it increases accountability. So, the uh, tendency toward increased accountability of the central bank. It uh, increases the tendency toward increased um, accountability of the central bank to achieve the target. Indeed, uh, transparency, we can see that both uh, transparency and communication, uh, it go hand in hand with the increased accountability. Other arguments uh, is that uh, this is consistent with the democratic principles, uh, especially when we talk about uh, independence of central bank. Uh, we, we have seen in previous discussion that most of the time the critics of uh, central bank independence argue that uh, they believe that the monetary authorities, they are allied groups, uh, they are not elected through democratic channel, not elected directly by the public. Uh, however, giving these principles that the giving a mandate that the inflation targeting, uh, this actually the proponents argue that this is consistent with the democratic principles. So, not only uh, is accountability valuable uh, in its own right, but it is also make institutional framework for the conduct of monetary policy more consistent with the democratic principles. So, to shortly, um, the inflation targeting framework promotes the accountability of the central bank to elected officials uh, who are given some responsibility for setting the goals of monetary policy and then monitoring uh, the economic outcomes. And in addition, it also uh, increases the improved performance, inflation targeting countries seem to have significantly reduced uh, both the rate of inflation uh, and inflation expectations beyond what likely would have occurred in the absence of uh, inflation targets. Uh, 
The disadvantage is there is delayed signaling because this is actually the critics argue, critics uh, point out that um, inflation is not easily controlled by the monetary authorities because there are other factors are also there. Furthermore, because of long lags in the effects of monetary policy, inflation outcomes are revealed only after a uh, substantial uh, lag. So, other arguments against this is too much rigidity that means uh, some economists criticize inflation targeting because they believe it imposes a rigid rule on monetary policy makers and limits their ability to respond to unforeseen circumstances because they have given the mandate of inflation targeting that is to uh, achieve the target and to ensure uh, inflation the price stability. Further things are um, is a potential for increased outflow fluctuations and also uh, giving too much importance on the inflation stability they sometimes ignore the economic growth. Uh, it has been found that uh, sometimes uh, in order to ensure sound economic growth, uh, it is better to follow increase that the expansionary monetary policy by increasing money supply or reducing rate of interest so that the GDP can be uh, increased. But sometimes since the mandate for the monetary policy is mainly the inflation targeting, so most often they increase money supply and as a result uh, instead of reduced rate of interest, uh, rate of interest increase and GDP growth uh, is hampered. Uh, the pace at which GDP grows is often hampered because of uh, inflation, tar inflation targeting. So, let us now review some international uh, recent international experience. So, the inflation targeting uh, it has been especially New Zealand government uh, they followed um, uh, they are the champion uh, in introducing uh, in the inflation targeting. So, the New Zealand Reserve Bank Act of 1989. Um, so, the prime function or prime function of the Reserve Bank of New Zealand uh, is to maintain the stability in the uh, general uh, level of prices. So, the act mandates that the Minister of Finance and the Governor of the Reserve Bank uh, agree on monetary policy targets to achieve price stability. So, much of the 1990s price stability was defined as an inflation rate within a range of 0, 0 to 2 percent. So, in 1997, uh, this definition was loosened a bit to a range of 0.3 percent. So, the Reserve Bank is then free to choose the strategy that it believes uh, will best achieve the policy target. So, uh, this is the, the uh, New Zealand was the champion here, they, they followed it and started it in uh, 1989. Then other countries, Canada made an announcement, joint announcement by the Minister of Finance and the Governor of the Bank of Canada. Uh, they established a formal inflation target uh, in 1991. So, they, they, they announced this policy and as a result empirical evidence suggests that inflation decreased uh, since 1991. Then the United Kingdom uh, adopted an inflation target as its nominal anger uh, in 1992 and as a result initially they set up the target of 1 percentage to 4 percentage. Then in subsequent period uh, in 1997 the inflation target was set up uh, set at 2.5 percentage and again uh, the empirical evidence suggests that they were able to achieve the target uh, inflation has been close to its target and growth has been strong and unemployment has been decreasing. All this actually mainly because as a response of 1970s, 80s, 1970s, uh, 80s period uh, you can see that the stagflation that is hyperinflation then they, these countries they followed um, inflation targeting. Then the empirical evidences also suggest that the um, uh, New Zealand and Canada and uh, United Kingdom experiment with inflation targeting is resulted in achieving the desired result because these are the years when they implemented uh, started inflation targeting. Then you can see the inflation rate on the y axis of this figure and time period is given on the x axis. Then you can see that the inflation you can see that uh, inflation has been declining right. So, inflation target that the inflation rate has been uh, declining over period of time. So, you can also see the green line that is the, that is the target, a uh, target range and the red line shows the actual inflation rate and you can see that for New Zealand and for uh, UK 
like Canada and UK, you can see that um, the inflation rate has been uh, declining and they are having a stable inflation after adopting uh, the strategy of inflation targeting. Uh, so, in this session we have discussed uh, with the various strategies used by the um, uh, Fed and then subsequently we discussed uh, the new strategy that is actually inflation targeting and I want to again uh, highlight that in parallel to that in order to achieve the inflation targeting still um, the other intermediate targets that the monetary aggregates and uh, infl interest rate targeting is still being used. And in the next session, uh, let us continue this discussion and see uh, what are the further developments uh, in the monetary policy uh, strategy and tactics. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next session. Thank you.